In this video, we're looking at the use of stem cells in medicine. So we'll start by explaining how stem cells can be used to treat conditions like diabetes and paralysis. Then we'll look at some of the risks involved in the process. And finally, we'll consider the ethical implications and see why some people think that we shouldn't use stem cells in this way. Before we start, I want to quickly recap what stem cells are. And there are really two important features about them that you need to remember. One, they can divide by mitosis to produce more cells. And two, they can differentiate into different types of specialized cells. Now, there are lots of different kinds of stem cells, but the main two that you need to know about are embryonic stem cells, which are found in the early embryo and can differentiate into absolutely any type of specialized cell, and adult stem cells, which are found in the bone marrow of people of all ages, but can only differentiate into different types of blood cells. The other bit of background we need to know for this topic is that lots of conditions are due to faulty cells, which just means cells that are damaged in some way or that don't work properly. For example, type 1 diabetes is caused by damage to the pancreas cells that normally produce insulin, while paralysis is sometimes caused by damaged nerve cells, and sickle cell anemia is caused by misshapen red blood cells. So if you think about it, if we could somehow replace these faulty cells with properly working cells, then we could treat these conditions. And this is the basic idea behind using stem cells in medicine. We use stem cells to replace the faulty cells. The most common technique for actually doing this would be for scientists to extract embryonic stem cells from early embryos, grow them in a laboratory, and then stimulate them to differentiate into whichever type of specialized cell that we want, so that we can then give them to the patient to replace their faulty cells. For example, in the case of a diabetic patient, where the issue is that some of their pancreas cells have been damaged and don't produce insulin anymore, these scientists would take some embryonic stem cells and grow them in a laboratory, then stimulate them to differentiate into pancreas cells so that they can produce insulin, and then they could inject those cells into the patient's pancreas, where they could continue to divide and produce the insulin that the patient needs. Or in a similar way, if we wanted to treat somebody for paralysis, we could use the same process to produce healthy nerve cells. Or to treat them for cell cell anemia, we would differentiate them into healthy blood cells. Now, this method of using embryonic stem cells sounds great in theory. But in practice, it has a couple of drawbacks. The first is the fact that it requires embryonic stem cells. Because remember, those are the only ones that are able to differentiate into any type of cell. However, because embryonic stem cells only come from embryos, there's a very limited supply of them. And there are also some ethical issues around using them, as we'll see later. The second drawback is the idea of rejection. Because the embryo and the patient have different genomes, the patient's immune system may reject the stem cells, which means it tries to destroy them because it identifies them as foreign. We can reduce the risk of this happening by giving the patient medications to suppress their immune system, but it doesn't always work and often has side effects. Now, an alternative to this, which would overcome both of these issues, would be to use adult stem cells instead. These are easy to get hold of and also won't cause rejection because they can be taken from the patient themselves. The downside of adult stem cells though is that they can only differentiate into different types of blood cells. So while we could use them to treat blood cell disorders like sickle cell anemia, we couldn't use them to treat other conditions like diabetes or paralysis. One caveat to this, though, is that there is some new research exploring how we could use adult stem cells to produce any type of cell. Regardless of which type of stem cell we use, though, there are two potential risks involved with using stem cells, namely virus transmission and tumor development. 
Virus transmission refers to the idea that if the donor stem cells are infected with a virus, either before they were taken by the scientists or while they were in the lab, then when they're transferred into the patient, they'd also transfer that virus, which could then infect the patient and cause even more problems. On the other hand, tumour development is the idea that because stem cells can divide so quickly, there's a chance that they could get out of control once they've been transplanted into the patient, and so they could go on to develop into a tumour or a cancer. Okay, so the final thing we need to cover is the ethical objection to using embryonic stem cells. This is the idea that the human embryos that are being used have the potential for human life. And so on religious or moral grounds, some people object to their use in research. On the other hand, other people think that the benefits of curing existing people who are suffering is more important than the rights of embryos. Either way though, an important point to remember is that the embryos that are used are usually the unwanted ones from fertility clinics that would otherwise have been destroyed. So they probably wouldn't have developed into human anyway. Also, governments normally heavily regulate this area of research, with some countries banning it completely. In the UK, embryonic research is legal, but it's tightly controlled, and scientists have to follow strict rules. Hey everyone, Amadeus here. I just wanted to let you know that we also have a learning platform where you can watch all of our videos, practice what you've learned with questions, and keep track of all of your progress for both the sciences and maths. It's completely free, so if you haven't already, you can check it out by clicking on our logo here on the right. Or if you'd like to do the lesson for this particular video, we put the link to that in the description down below. We've also arranged all of the videos for this subject in a playlist for you here. That's all though, so hope you enjoy, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.